Hi there, my name is Matt Jackson, creator of Quote Companion, and I'm looking to talk to you today about Tom Buchanan, the scoundrel. Not the most likable of characters, and I'm going to tell you why, and then I'm going to tell you how to prove it with quotes from the text. Topics of discussion include Tom being racist, elitist, sexist, and although it never says that, I've got a strong feeling he's pretty homophobic as well. We're also going to look at the difference between him and Gatsby, his restlessness, and his destructive manner. So Tom is pretty clearly racist. Uh, two good quotes just to prove that pretty quickly. Next I'll throw everything overboard and allow into marriage. Um, I know it's the 1920s so he gets away with it kind of, um, but if you ever want to bring up the negative aspects of his character this is a good place to start. And also if we don't look out the white race will be utterly submerged. So um, this is a good one as well because it shows he feels the need to defend himself. He feels under pressure by new people coming up and you can use that to talk about why he doesn't like Gatsby so much and the, the other new money people. And that leads us nicely into his elitism. Um, he just makes up things about them. Most of these rich just and big bootleggers. And he says afterwards that he just imagined it. Uh, it's just his, his own biases and stereotypes. He calls Gatsby Mr. Nobody from nowhere. So obviously where you, you come from in your history is, uh, is a big part of uh, your status for Tom. Uh, it's important. And by binary opposition, so because he's calling him Mr. Nobody from nowhere, you can surmise that he thinks he's somebody from somewhere. So he's picking himself up at the same time that he thinks he is the ruling class. And finally, he's sexist as well. Why not throw it all in? Um, you can see my girl, very possessive as women, uh, thinks they belong to him. He tries to buy Daisy's love. Uh, he's also violent towards women. He breaks uh, Myrtle's nose, just some nice short quotes to prove these. Um, and Daisy is scared of him, she locks himself. She locks herself in his room later on in chapter 7 in case he tries any brutality. So she obviously is aware of his uh, misogynistic side. Other things that you might want to talk about with Tom are he's definitely an old money, he's definitely established his family are incredibly wealthy, so it's not just that he's wealthy, he's got a history of coming from money. Um, and you can see that his house belongs to Domain, the oil man, so uh, it's not just who you are, it's where you come from is very important, and he's keen to point that out when he tells him, uh, he tells Nick about his house, he's keen to tell him his history, because that's important to him, uh, being, being an old money person with tradition behind you. You might also want to talk about his restlessness, so he has all this time and he has all this money, but he's got nothing to do with it, there's no purpose in his life, he doesn't have any passions or hobbies, uh, he just gets drunk and cheats on his wife. It's, it's basically how he spends his time because he's just that kind of guy. Um, his eyes shift restlessly around his head. He just drifts around. He moves to Paris and then he moved back to Chicago and now he's moved to the west and uh, the east. Sorry, and he just drifts around wherever people are rich and play polo together. So that's the only thing he has in common with anyone. He just likes being uh, rich with other people. That's the only thing that keeps him with Daisy. That great quote: "Smash things up. Uh, they're careless creatures that smash things up and retreat back into their money or their vast carelessness." or whatever kept them together. So um, there's also that great quote that um, everything in his life savors of anticlimax now. He's already had his peak years um, and that that might give you an understanding as to why he's so destructive in his nature. Because he's always seek seeking the, um, the turbulence of that lost football game of his sporting youth. So he smashes things up now. Um, he breaks uh, the, uh, the woman he has an affair with, the chambermaid, she breaks her arm, she breaks uh, Daisy's, uh, Myrtle's nose, and then she ends up dying. Uh, so he's, he's reckless, he's destructive, and uh, he's just not a very nice guy, is he? If you're writing an essay on Tom at all, you might want to check out our example essay on him. Basically, it's a full introduction onto, uh, as you can see here, and then I'll give you advice as to what to put in each paragraph, what quotes to use, and what to mention in your analysis, so you're going to get the best uh, essay you possibly can. It's going to be well-researched, well-structured, and it's only going to take you a fraction of the time, because I've done all the hard work, you just have to join the dots up. Um, here's the introduction of the, and the first paragraph from the Tom representing the upper class example essay. Uh, you can see from the essay that we'll be arguing that Tom is a symbol of everything that's wrong with the upper class. He's sexist, he's racist, he's elitist, and we'll prove this by looking at Fitzgerald's use of form, setting, and as well as things like word choice. Uh, the first paragraph is all about how Fitzgerald describes Tom physically and what we can read into that. So we're going to analyze the symbolic, uh, symb symbolic nature of some descriptions, like Tom's powerful body representing the power he has over other people, 
and the use of the word doll to show the powerless of the lower classes. Um, to get the entire example essay, just click the link below the description to get to our home page, and then go to the example essay page, where you can buy our example essays for five dollars each, or complete one of the special offers, uh, usually just submitting your email address or downloading a file, and you can get it absolutely free. It's a great tool, and I hope you have a lot of help using it.